Now I want to turn to the following problem. Suppose I have two different points. And maybe I, if I'm going to sketch them out, I will put in some axes. And I'm going to put in one vector here. We'll call that the vector x. I'll put in another vector here. That will be the vector y. And then I can form a triangle if I take this vector x that I have and I subtract off the vector y, then what I would be left with is this vector that looks so like this. So in other words, I have a connective vector between them, which is the vector x minus y. And this is going to create for me a triangle. If I've got an x and a y, I can create this x minus y, and it's going to be the vector that goes down the other side of the triangle. Now here's my problem. My question is, how can I figure out the length between two points? So I am going to define a notion of distance. I'm going to define the distance between two points, x and y, where I think of these points as the tips of the vectors, the distance between those two points. It is going to be defined, there's my colon equals again, to be the square root of this length of this vector. In other words, x minus y dotted with x minus y. And then by our previous definition, that the vector dotted with itself and the square root is just considered to be the notion of length, so I will call this the length of x minus y. So that's how I can compute the length between two vectors. Now, I want to run out this computation. This is a dot product, and we know some algebraic rules like distributivity that we put up above. So let me just see what happens if I do a little bit of playing around algebraically here, and then we'll connect it geometrically in a moment. I'm actually going to look at the difference squared. So what I need to do here is I've gotten rid of the square root, but I, I want to be able to expand out this expression here. And the way I'm going to do that is to think that I can just expand it in normal old factoring. So this is the, the first and the first, the first and the second, the second and the first, and the second and the second. That's how I would FOIL this particular expression. And so I'm going to say that this is vector x dotted with vector x minus vector x dotted with vector y minus vector y dotted with vector x. And then finally, minus minus is a plus, plus vector y dotted with vector y. All right, then I'm going to identify a few different components. First of all, x dot x. This is just the same thing as length of x squared by our definition. So I have a length of x squared. And then I'm going to do the same thing here to y dot y. I know it's on the right, but I'm going to do it next anyways. This is the same thing as the length of y squared. And then I've got these two different expressions, x dot y and y dot x. But I told you earlier that we could commute inside of a dot product, that x dot y was equal to y dot x. So I've got two different copies of these with minus signs, both. So minus 2x dot y. Now, this formula looks a little bit like Pythagoras, but there's a problem. It's this minus 2x dot y. If we didn't have that, we could interpret this as sort of a c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. If you think of two vectors lying on some plane, we're doing plane geometry, we can apply our Pythagoras, we would get c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But only if it's a right triangle. That's when Pythagoras applies, when you've got a 90 degree or a pi over 2 angle there. So what I'm going to do is define a notion of orthogonality. The analog of having a right triangle is one where this dot product is going to be 0 and then you get Pythagorean theorem. So I am going to define that my vector x and my vector y, which, by the way, both live inside of Rn, that these are going to be orthogonal if we have that property that x dot y is equal to 0. And so we've taken a two-dimensional thing and, and brought it up into this higher dimensional analog of orthogonality between two different vectors. And in this case, when the x dot y are orthogonal, then the expression we just computed is just a Pythagorean formula. So 
when this is true, we're just going to get that formula, the vector x minus the vector y squared is the length of the vector x squared plus the length of the vector y squared. And we are going to say that that is our higher dimensional analog of Pythagorean theorem. This is just going to be Pythagoras. So this dot product that we've defined has been very useful for us in connecting into length. We've got a definition of length. We can see when it would obey a Pythagorean theorem. We're going to have a new notion of orthogonality. That's when this dot product is going to be zero. But I also want to connect it to the notion of the angle between two different vectors. Indeed, if we go back to our picture that we have, I can imagine coming in here and, and putting in an angle theta here. And then you might recall from just geometry that we had a rule called the cosine law. And it's going to apply here, and it's going to look very similar. So I'm going to imagine that I have a triangle that looks like this, where I've got an A, a B, a C, and some theta in between. Then the cosine law is going to be that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of theta. And so if I take these two things that I have, my familiar cosine law from high school and this, this formula that we computed over here, they look very, very, very similar. It kind of looks like the length of x is a and the length of b, length of y is b, and the length of x minus y is c. But if I'm going to put these together, the, the one new thing that's going to come out of this is the following. It's going to tell me that my vector x dot vector y, note that x is playing the role of a and y is playing the role of b here, that this is going to be equal to AB cosine of theta. A is the length of X. B is the length of Y cosine of theta. So that gives me this relation by applying the cosine law and trying to identify it. And then I can define theta. I can figure it out by manipulating and identifying that cosine of theta is equal to X dot Y divided out by the length of the vector x times the length of the vector y. And if you wanted to go one step further, you could take arc cosine of both sides and get theta is arc cosine of this particular fraction. So in other words, the dot product has gotten us not just to a notion of length, but also to a notion of angle.